and welcome to another episode of the Apple Bomb Bytes podcast. Today is episode number 50 already. And today is also the last episode of 2023. So we're going to recap the year a little bit. Um, you could also say that we are here at the Gourmet Pens uh, Club podcast because it is kind of this vibes. Because we have uh, Candace, aka Inks and Anchors, here on the show today as our co-host. Welcome back, Candace. And we also have Aziza, aka Gourmet Pens, here on the show. So, uh, welcome, Aziza. It, it kind you. of feels that, that I am on your show, but it's, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're all pretty cool, so that's okay. We'll allow it. We're just okay. going to hang out. <laughs> we're just going to hang out. Yeah. It's so yeah, chill. It's, it's just chill and fun. <laughs> that's the most important thing. Yeah, so great to have you here, ladies, on Thank the show. You. And we're going to do a little bit of recap of this year because it was kind of an uh, exciting year. It was, was it the first COVID-free year? I think so, right? The first lockdown-free year. Yes, yeah. that's I think. for sure. Yeah, That's for sure. Yeah, That's for sure. So that was a good thing, of course. Uh, and there are also a lot of other many good things uh, that we need to discuss uh, in terms of pens and uh, you know, things like that, stationary. But first, we always start with the pen check. And Candice, I would like to ask you to start with your pen check, the last one of 2023. The pen check. My pen check is this beautiful Otto wow. Hut Model 3 Lilac Orange. I saw this pen at the DC Pen Show in just this past August. And they, I think they just had prototypes there or pre sale not not pre-sales but just showing everyone the pen but it wasn't really released until beginning of november i think and when i mm -hmm. saw it right away this is this is so me the the lilac the orange the combination the the pink sec or the purple section and the purple nib it's yeah. just so <laughs> amazing so and i have it inked with ink institute gourmet pens shop okanagan grape that's a mouthful. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She would yes. not stop talking about this pen. Yes. I was like, just get it. Yes. <laughs> I was like, just well, get it. Stop talking about it. Well, it is a beautiful piece. And especially that yeah. nib, you know, that, uh, that purple color. The purple nib. nib. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. So I got it an extra fine. Nice cap. I know. I know. <laughs> Aziz and her extra fine uh, hatred. It's not a hatred. It's just it's not a hatred. Taste. But, but yeah, no, I like the uh, the <laughs> snap of the cap. It's so mm -hmm. satisfying. Okay, nice. so if we during the podcast hear you playing around yes, with it, click, then we click, know click, what click, the sound it. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, th those those nibs. We see that more often, right? Those colored nibs. So back yeah. in the days, it was yeah. like you have a gold nib, maybe sometimes a silver colored nib. Then came the ruthenium nibs, rose gold nibs. But now it's like all colors of the rainbow. Nips. I Just find, like the and I, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, I find this this even though normally on like Bach nibs, I think tend to be the ones that are colored, and it's harder. Like the coating makes it quite stiff. I find, mm -hmm. but this one is not, and I don't know if that's because because I got this from Apple Bloom, and I don't know if Annabelle did something to it, but it writes actually I quite don't, nicely. I'm not sure if she checked it. Uh, yeah. I, well, she, I, she might have. She, I think she she might have just <laughs> waved some magic wand on it. Well, it is. It's a beautiful. Um, it's not as hard and as hard as the nail, and it's, it feels. Mm. It feels like a nice gold nib, actually. So I'm quite happy mm. with it. Well, honestly, Otto so. Hood. Uh, so we've been to their factory. It's a huge plant. It's a huge facility. A lot of other brands also manufacture part of their pens there. So I'm not oh. allowed to say it, but brands like yeah. Montblanc also create small parts of their pens there. Um, but um, they also have this huge facility uh, for painting uh, parts of pens. So oh. they really are experts in painting. So most likely they know what they do. And that's why right. it feels that so good. That is yes. very cool. That's interesting. Yes. Well, it's my first I, Otto Hood and I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Otto Hood is like one of the most underrated pens, but um, it's growing, it's growing. And mm -hmm. recently Faber-Castell bought the company actually. So that might help spreading the like law for Otto Hood. Right. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yes. That's a good move. 
Yeah, because <laughs> Fabric itself, of course, have this huge, uh, <laughs> huge distribution network. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, everybody will learn about Otohut in the entire world, and that will give this yeah. crazy boom, I think. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Cool. All right, enough about Otohut. Aziza, what uh, pen check do you have today? <laughs> okay, we have another German brand. Oh, my gosh, Otohut is German, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I have... <laughs> This is this is wow. actually a loan from you. Oh really? <laughs> it's the the Pelican. Do I ever get it back, or do you like yeah, it so much? Should have reminded him. Never... Should have reminded him. <laughs> no, I, I like to be honest about it, just in case. So this yeah. is the Zuverein M six hundred Art, and it's the I'm probably going to say this wrong. The Glauco Cambon. Yeah, I think it's nice. Um, it is okay. The, it has been a while since Pelican has released something particularly unusual they've been doing just variations on their m600 colorways mm -hmm. and this barrel is fantastic with the colors and it almost looks like it's guilloche and mm -hmm. it's chatoyant and just stunning it looks just, almost like rodden to me yes they've achieved right. something really beautiful and i they just knocked it out of the park with this one so if they did this in pink and turquoise Wow. I would sell both my kidneys for it. <laughs> and purple. Don't do that. And purple. Don't do that. A combination. Yeah, oh, yes. that would be incredible. Yes. So this is my pen check, and it has a fine nib, and I'm enjoying oh. it. Of course, a pelican fine is like a medium Whatever. of anything else, but <laughs> it's really fantastic, and it's inked with Mont Blanc Irish Green. So oh, nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if pelican is going to do more of these kind of projects yeah. they should listen to us because like hello yeah. i know what we want <laughs> yeah no but th this project was was going on for quite some time you know so the introduction of it it, it took like one and a half year or so so i'm really curious if in 2024 we will see another of those art collections i hope so yeah i really hope so will we That's ever my... see broader nibs from pelican again huh. we can dream you can only hope right you can only hope one day they, they do have it with the bespoke nib service right then then they offer uh they do you have do. a bespoke nib aziza not from pelican oh i'm gonna have to go yeah i have to go it's for research i need to go <laughs> to the factory for research yes yeah, yeah. they will let you in yourself. sacrifice myself <laughs> i don't know if they would let me in they'll be like you're the weird one who drinks it. so <laughs> <laughs> Lock up all the ink bottles. Yes. <laughs> all right, let's have a look at my pen check because I have something that's not from Germany. I have something that's from Italy. It's a uh, it's a Joya pen. It is uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. The Metis Metis Metis. I don't know. It's the Metis Irida with uh, gold color trims. And I don't know if the camera catches it uh, correctly, but there are so many colors inside here. That, oh, I think it's the Métis. 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 It's Métis. French. Métis, yeah. yeah. Métis. Métis, yeah, Métis. Oh, that um, is stunning. That's beautiful. There are so I many colors inside, but also the depth of the colors. It's quite fascinating. And there are little, uh, I don't know how, how to say that, but there's like kind of mother of pearl parts inside there that light up. So it's a, it's a really nice material. And uh, it's still uninked. So there's no ink inside yet. So I need to ask everybody that's watching right now, let me know what kind of ink should I add here? Because there's so many colors here. Like we see orange, purple, turquoise, turquoise. blue, like any color in the rainbow is here. But I which like color should pens. I put inside? Yes. Yeah, it's exciting because then you have so many more ink options. Yeah. So uh, Joya did a great job on this. And um, yeah. let me know what color I should do in there. All right, Aziza, before we start the podcast, I have a question yes. for you from our previous guest, and it was uh, oh. Jim Crawford, a.k.a. Pensla, uh, you know, with, uh -oh. uh, with, the, with the crazy nips experiments. Oh, yeah. And his question for you was, what is your favorite nip and why? <laughs> oh, that's really tough. Okay. I I'm know gonna, the answer. <laughs> I'm actually going to say a pilot parallel. Oh. Mm, yeah. And I, the reason is that it, the parallel, I've had my first parallel, which was a six millimeter for 14 years. And 
I have used it for probably like 300 ink reviews. And I just love, love, love the Pilot Parallel. And they're accessible. Like they're affordable, relatively yeah, affordable for almost anyone. And so it's just, it's something that I can use to inspire the love for writing in others. So Pilot Parallel. Excellent choice. But otherwise, the Pensloth Guru or a Mont Blanc calligraphy bespoke nib. <laughs> and what so, uh, what about matters. what about the, the the nib from Annabelle? Oh, that's like separate tier. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, that's that's like a totally different tier <laughs> because okay, okay. those are those are jewelry handcrafted, totally different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no. No. That's okay. All right. That was exciting. Yes. 2023. It's, uh, you know, today's the last day because it's going to be broadcast at December 31. It was a really long year. A lot of things happened here. And uh, I was just wondering because there are so many releases in 2023. But what was the best release of 2023? Like. Shown Monarch Nib. Yes. In the anodized finishes. That was indeed quite something. Yeah. That was indeed quite something. That was like everybody was talking about it. It's, you know, everybody knows that I like broad, triple broad, quadruple broad, whatever. <laughs> and I have, I think, three monarchs, and they're only one is broad. And they have been inked constantly since I got them because there is just something about those nibs. It, they are. They're just to die for. They're so good. So, and I like the anodization to. that he did. Like, I think that really just put it over the top. Because I think, I think the monarch, just the regular nib, was twenty twenty two towards the end, right? Mm -hmm. But when he started doing the the, I think in Chicago was the first time he had the anodizations. Colors. And it's not just, and it's not just like one anodize, anodization, right? He had mm -hmm. like, um all blue or all purple or rainbow, like a gradation, or I, the one that I have is like a tiger stripe. I call it a tiger stripe, yellow with blue stripes. Like it's mm -hmm. just, it was like a work of art, right? Yeah. Um, I agree. I agree. That's got to be one of the best releases of 2023. Yeah. 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 For and he users. went all in all the way immediately he went you know, all with in. all those colors yeah. and everything. You know, usually yeah. you, you first start like, Base, in a basic you know, like, way, like, yeah. let's see how people yeah. react. But he was just like, let's do yeah, this. Yeah, he's like, at the show, you get a whole selection <laughs> yeah. of these anodized nibs. And then you have to pick one. Yeah, yeah. that's the hard or, part. Or two or three or, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he did a really spectacular job on that. So those were, because I ended up with more than one of them, they left a, they left a mark on me. That's good. good, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's kind of more like the most, ex or, or is, this, is this the most excited found that you found in 2023? Okay, that, so that would just be Nib. Yeah. Um, okay, for, for a fountain pen, that's tough. Because um, I didn't buy a lot this year. Mm -hmm. I think for, I think it was 2023 that Bennu really came out with their painted pens. Like, I feel oh, like this is the yeah. year of the painted pens. Yeah. And Bennu, I think, really hit it out of the park with some of their ren renditions of painted pens. Like, the, like the cute cat and dog. There's the so... I did get that one. Yeah. Or, <laughs> and you or have the, the, flamingo the flamingo on the website. I, yeah. And the yeah. tab is open on my computer because <laughs> it's just... <laughs> just to look at yeah. for now. Just in yeah. case, right? Like, it's pink and purple yeah. and blue. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Bennu is also just killing it. Yeah. Like their releases, I mean, not speaking for my own, <laughs> which is the <laughs> true unicorn. Um, they are creative and adventurous. Mm -hmm. And they're like, as a company, their service is outstanding. Mm -hmm. I like, I just, I love them. So yeah. I have a lot and of accessible, them. accessible, accessible. Which is, yeah. But it's also fun yeah, how, to see how they kind of reinvented uh, themselves. Because I yeah, know yes. how they started and where they're going now. That's completely mm -hmm. different. You know, it's like yeah. what they do now, it's, it's way more, uh, uh, how do I say that? It's more luxury compared to what they mm -hmm. did, in the, uh, you know, in the first few mm -hmm. years. 
Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess they have understood that pen people love a good writing experience, but mm-hmm. we also love a beautiful pen. And if you can get both on the same pen, why, why not? not? Yeah. Like yeah. I have some ugly pens with great nibs and I have some beautiful pens with horrible nibs, but I'm like, I can't part with it. So I just need to get the right combination. So mm-hmm. they have nailed it yeah. with that. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay, but this this is still kind of like uh, Bennu. Is it low end or high end? I would say middle end. I mean, they're pretty, yeah, because they have something. They have a good range. Yeah, like there's a good range of prices, and they're they do occasional low end. No, they're, they're not, not low, low end. No, no. no like no, they're no, not no. inexpensive. They're not no, for they're like not, throwaway no entry, pens. Entry level kind That's of right. pens. Not yeah, entry. but but they're definitely. They have treat yourself pens, like the, the hand painted ones. Mm-hmm. Um, they have collectible ones, like when they release the talismans. They're they're a splurge, but very collectible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and and then the smaller ones, like the scepters, and um, they just discontinued the hexagon line. But um, yeah, they did the bri- briolette. Yeah. Do they still have the, the briolette? The briolette. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they're they're just. I mean, they're also great for kids. Like, what kid doesn't want a fun pen? You know? And then they do yeah, the one, you, like the Ambrosia. Give, would you give a child a Bennu pen, or would you start giving with, like, a Lamy Safari or something? If I really like the kid? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends. I might start with, like, a Preppy and a Safari, and then show them, if you can write the alphabet in cursive, <laughs> This Bennu awaits you. Oh wow, that's a good that's a good one, you know, Teased, to, to teaser, motivate them. Like, them. Yeah, yeah. No. And yeah. in the meantime, I will take care of this uh, beautiful exactly. hand painting. Exactly. I'll look after <laughs> yeah. it. Don't worry about it. That flamingo yeah. is in my pocket in the meantime. No worries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do like that flamingo. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about yeah. that later. No worries. Uh, Candace, what was for you like the the like the, the most excited found that you found in 2023? most exciting uh, fountain pen yes um or do material custom pens, do custom pens count yes i mean i to me the most exciting thing i found was this urushi artist from japan called yukari and i still don't remember her last name <laughs> sorry um um but I, before I used to, to give all my work to Hiroko from Bocamundo and she's wonderful mm-hmm. and has a very, very long wait list. But Yukari is fantastic because she actually customizes. So she was able to paint my three dogs on 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 my pen oh, in wow. Maquier. And I finished it with um there's some rotten flakes and she rushied the whole thing and truly you know one of a kind and so finding her i think was my exciting discovery of uh 2020 it was my i mean she was she's been around for a few years i think but that to me was the most exciting thing Fountain yeah because now you have your grail pen i have my grail right. my three babies on a pen i've been searching mm-hmm. for someone to do that to paint on a pen your three dog dogs, babies my three dog babies <laughs> yes i do have a human child <laughs> <laughs> I love her, yeah. but I don't need her picture. picture no? My pen. Aww. Oh my gosh. Oh, poor Taylor. I'm going to send her this episode. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> oh, man. No, but it's always special, you know, when, when artists can do things like that on small objects like pens. Yeah. Yeah. It's really sure. impressive. Been... And, and, and then, you know, to yeah. mention it, uh, that I am not even able to make a, a, a circle, then it's like even more <laughs> impressive, right? Yeah, I can't draw yeah. at all. Yeah. So it always <laughs> amazes me that someone can take a picture and make it look like it on the pen. Can't you draw a seesaw? No, not at all. No? It's awful. I mean, no. <laughs> but you have such a beautiful <laughs> handwriting. Like... I could draw letters, but I cannot draw other things. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I've seen you draw a cat. Yeah, but it's not good. It's good. I recognize it. That's okay. you know okay. step one. <laughs> well, that's one of my goals for next year is to practice very basic drawing skills. So that's what I'm going to be doing. 
Well, this is going to be really excited because now we are already planning yeah. like an episode in 2024 December to talk about your yeah. improvements in, yeah. in drawing. <laughs> and, it's going to be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we already talked a little bit about the insure nips. Are there any other exciting nips that you uh, saw in 2023 on the market that was like, wow, this is, this is really cool? I mean, aside from custom makers, mm -hmm. because it started out with, I mean, Ralph Reyes from Regalia Writing Labs really kind of started the whole thing and it snowballed from there. Um, I, I mean, we've got Pensloth, we have Monty Winfield. Um, there's a, new, a woman in Canada who is doing crazy things now, um, cactus nib experiments. Uh, I mean, these people, they are so creative, the things they come up with to do to a nib, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just so cool. And yet Annabelle is still completely on a different level because she is... <laughs> taking the metal and turning it into a sheet and turning that sheet into a knit, which is just wild. But I love to see this new art form mm -hmm. growing and developing. I would love to do it, but I'm terrified. No, but sometimes it's also good to not, you know, go there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> just... Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's like, don't, 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 don't even don't, think about don't, it. Yeah. Don't do no, it. No. Start with a drawing thing. And then in 2025, yeah. you can maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe experiment I can't, in that field. I can't even draw the nib that I want. Uh, the, the other one would be Mont Blanc's bespoke yeah. service. Uh, they have been sending their nib box around. So I actually had a chance to try out all the nibs. Oh. So I have, a, I have a video coming on that. So I went to the boutique and I set up my little tripod and my lights and I, I tested every single nib. And what was the most fun? And nib? that was. Okay. So because or is I already this like have a teaser the that then you have feet? to watch the video. Well, I didn't get it oh. because it's like several thousand dollars, oh, unfortunately, wow. but uh, it's there. So I would have to say it's the scroll nib. So you can get a scroll nib much more affordably, like from Caveco with the twin nib. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just the one that makes two lines. But somehow it feels so much more fun when you know you've spent thousands of dollars on it. Of course it, it does. <laughs> it's so, called yeah. justification. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't quite justified it yet, but it is, it's a lot of fun to play with. Mm -hmm. And they also have the Kugel again, which I think was really cool. The cool go, uh, which is like that round ball of tipping. Uh, but yeah, it was, even if you don't own them, which most of those are out of range. Uh, but you can still enjoy really it cool. if, you, if you're not owning exactly. it. Exactly. You know? Because I, and that, I can I also guess. enjoy it when people show their pens on Instagram or whatever social media and just, yeah. you know, look at them that's enough for me yeah yeah see how they use it yeah. see what they've created it's it's very fun is the twin nib the it has a wider tine and a narrower yes. tine yeah so it's otherwise the, the twin the shadow the scroll but yeah you can get it more affordably elsewhere but <laughs> yeah no 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 just curious. yeah but the, but they're really it's really very interesting because now they have the option of putting a, a signature on there or a gem or like a specific engraving of course it's big money yeah. but it's really interesting and i think smaller nib makers are also going down that path mm -hmm. and then you're supporting a small nib maker yeah which is yeah. why i have so many of annabelle's nibs <laughs> so <laughs> i think i think monty winfield is doing some really good yeah Yes. interesting things as well yeah. because in particular um he started to do a more accessible line of nibs you know mm -hmm. the utility nib and some of his architect nibs for re like relatively reasonable price i think 50 us or 55 us mm -hmm. which is a great way to try like the build is amazing right the, the quality of his nibs are amazing yes. yeah he used and to be so, a jeweler i believe so yeah he's yeah. got that 
touch. Like it's yeah, just really refined. See, you, can, you can tell. He knows mm-hmm. what he's doing. But it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, talking about Mont Blanc, this is a, this is a really nice hook for me because so uh, yeah. <laughs> I also have some new products that I would like to announce. New products. And one of them is a Mont Blanc. It is the last Mont Blanc that we received in our store this year. Uh, it was the Muses uh, release of them, the latest uh, Muses release of them. Uh, it is the Maria Callas edition. I don't know if I pronounced her last name correctly, but anyway, it is Maria, her first name. I know that. Uh, she was born in 1923 <laughs> in New York City to Greek parents. And she studied singing in Greece as a young girl, developing the talent that would lead to her being hailed as La Davina uh, in some of the world's greatest operas. Her deeply moving voice combined with her elegant style and dramatic instinct earned her the title of Prima Donna Assoluta. And that means that besides her talent on stage, she was also a woman who knew how to make an entrance off stage. The passion that electrified her performances was equally vivid in her love for haute couture. This special edition that I have here, that was uh, just launched by Mont Blanc, highlights one of her favorite colors, and that's, of course, turquoise, in the precious resin of the cap and the barrel, while reflecting Maria Callas' graceful beauty in slender, elegant silhouette. The design dresses, luxuries, accessories, and striking jewelry that she collected and treasured, as well as the glamour she executed, by made her a style icon who enchanted the world again and again with her breathtaking looks. All right, let's dive a little bit more into uh, the pen because the platinum coated clip it is decorated with a synthetic stone whose color is reminiscent of the radiant turquoise blue of the Aegean Sea, which is a memory of her sea-encircled Greek homeland. The petal shape of oh. this stone reversed to a new rose that was named after Maria Callas in 1965, honoring the singer's own great love for roses. A custom detail from one of her recognizable bel canto roles, Bellini's Norma, is reflected in a pattern of laurel leaves. I don't know if the camera catches that, but I will add a close-up. Kind of. Yes. Um, it's surrounding the platinum-coated cone of the edition, along with the embossed signature of the soprano. But I will add B-roll to that, too make it more smoother. And finally, as a tribute to the great soprano, the handcrafted gold nip uh, is embossed with a whole outlined cat eyes, so typical of her image, as well as the name that is inseparable from Maria Callas, La Divina. All right, so Candace, I was wondering how good can you sing? I have the great (laughs) honor of being among 10% of the population, maybe even less, who cannot carry a tune. <laughs> My daughter's first sentence was, Mummy, stop singing. <laughs> I am just, I am not joking. <laughs> it is horrible. Usually somebody says, Oh, you don't know that song? You know, Candace, can you, you know, what does it sound mm. like? And everyone goes, No, <laughs> no, it won't help. <laughs> it just won't help. So, um, so, okay, let's talk I about the pen. Then. Let's music talk about the pen. So she's not well, going to pre- us. Well, I appreciate it all that more, right? But anyone who can sing, mm-hmm. I just, I think it's, you know, like magic. Yeah. <laughs> it's just magic for me. But that pen is gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, I almost purchased, Aziza knows this, I almost purchased a um, Marilyn Monroe pen, mm-hmm. similar shape. Yeah. Um, and it was white, I think it was, right? That, that mm-hmm. uh, kind of white. Boy, am I glad I held up that mm-hmm. one because that is Yeah, she beautiful. actually stalked the Apple Bone website for it. I know. for the... sending me the link. She's like, do you like this pen? Do you think I, I should get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is is stunning. And, you know, both Aziz and I are December. All three of us are December babies, actually, yes. right? And the birthstone mm-hmm. is turquoise. Oh, really? Yes, it is. What a, oh, yeah, yeah, what a coincidence, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I, so all three I of really... Us, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Basically, but no that that is a that is a beautiful color. I don't know if I've seen any other Mont Blancs that color before. Mm, At least not in my. No. I'm not a huge Mont Blanc aficionado, so I don't really know. Mm-hmm. But that's just very striking. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very I've never striking. Seen At least Too not in birthday the, has passed. In those series. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's 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 very beautiful. It is, yeah. It is. They did a nice job on that. Um, yeah. I mean, I would buy things because the color is pretty. So. Yeah. You know. The only thing <laughs> the that like, you know the nip is so small. But maybe you know, that's also because it I, fits I know. the pen, right? So it's like you cannot. Yeah, it's proportional. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, it's proportional. This pen would not be right if it was the the next size up nib. It would just that's be true. That's bizarre. True. Yeah, like if it was like the one forty nine size mm. nib and pen, it yeah. would take away from the elegance. Elegance. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we do have it in store. So if you want to have it, you can uh, head over to the website of Oppobom and uh, we can ship it out. Um, of course, we have nice. fine and medium in stock. If you want to have like a other crazy nip or crazy like extra fine or broad, I'm not sure if they do double broad on these kind of nips, but uh, we can arrange that for you as well. All right, let's have a look at another uh, new uh, product that we have uh, at Oppobom lately. It's the MD Paper Notebooks. It is a new addition to the Oppobom collection. The MD Paper products are simple Japanese-made products and Midori's pride when it comes to the art of making paper. Not only the paper itself has been developed carefully, also the method of binding deserves an explanation. Because the MD Notebooks are bound by means of stitching a large sheet of paper and it's folded into a bundle of 16 pages, then such bundles are bound with thread and this method enables the notebook to open entirely flat ensuring ease of writing without a bumpy mm -hmm. middle aziza you love those notebooks right i absolutely love them these two are full mm -hmm. um not much camera space because you know but they are so, like the lying flat mm -hmm. is amazing super fountain pen friend okay okay Here's me trying to draw. Don't laugh oh, at wow. me. <laughs> so, see, it I was supposed to cool. be an elf. I think that's yeah, cool. Yeah, we can see it's an uh, elf. Here's a skull. That's a recognizable. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is also with Mont Blanc, uh, Jungle Green. Anyway, uh, fantastic. Th this alone, like lying flat and not being in your way, like struggling to hold the other half of the notebook down. It sounds really silly, but it just takes a lot of stress off when you're doing mm -hmm. something, whether you're creating or writing or taking notes. I really, I really like them. And what about the paper? Because Very the paper is also friendly. praised because it's so good, right? Very much so. So it does really well with water and pretty much every mm -hmm. ink. It shows and, shading and well. No, no bleed through. No bleed I through. Love, I love no I feathering. Love the MD paper, yeah. Yeah. Just no feathering. I, is it, I is find it in your top paper five of papers? Top oh, yeah. three? Top... Yeah. Uh, top, th top, top five. Top five, okay. It's top three. And the for only me. reason is because I like like thin paper. Because mm -hmm. I like the texture. This one's not bad, though. It's not bad. In terms of paper, top five. But in terms of the build of the notebook, mm -hmm. top three. Because the notebook is just, it's unbeatable. I mean, even when it's full, it's so secure. I've had other notebooks where the bindings just fall apart. Oh, that's not good. Well, I like their pads of paper, right? The pads of paper yeah. are bound on two sides, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah, it's not flapping around, you know, getting all crinkly and and um, yeah, and messed up. So and then so when you're ready to it, tear it, yeah, it's there and at the top, top, yeah. So and that so it doesn't get dog-eared. Yeah. So we don't carry that yet, but maybe right we should now. add that as well. I think you yeah. should. I think that's yeah. great. Thank you, Candice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But for now, we also have the MD Notebooks Lite, which are uh, which are thinner and, uh, you know, they're more easy maybe to, to, to bring to certain locations because this is, you know, still quite thick. Uh, yeah. But the, the MD Notebooks Lite, they're over there, but I'm, I, I'm not able to get them. <laughs> Use your magic powers. I can powers. see them. And they're much yeah. thinner, so they are more easy to carry with yeah. you or, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, use them like that. All right. Uh, so yeah. those are the two new products that we have in the store uh, as we speak. It's the Mont Blanc uh, Muses, Maria Callas, and the M Day Paper Notebooks, which we're really happy about. And, you know, then we're ready for 2024 with those notebooks. Candace, do you have a question for Aziza? 
I do have Ooh. a question. So no pressure. Aziza, <laughs> oh boy. Um, you're obviously in the fountain pen world. You, yes, you have your own shop. Mm -hmm. We do our podcast together. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for so long. What keeps you engaged and interested in this hobby? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's hard a really question. tough one. <laughs> but it's a good question because I have, I've been blogging at the very least since 2010. And I have seen other bloggers and YouTubers come and go. So some have come, at, they've made it big, and then they've retired from the pen world scene. And the trend is typically because they burn themselves out, right? There's just, they just do too much. Yeah. It's not sustainable. And so I have come close more than once where I thought, okay, I can't, I can't keep up this pace anymore. So instead of quitting, I just thought, okay, I'll just slow down. And start doing things, I find that doing the things more in person, so teaching workshops in person, and pet meets even, like they don't have to be official, that to me is... What is an official pen meet and what is an of, unofficial pen meet? Well, like like a pen show workshop would <laughs> yeah, be official, okay, where okay. people would have to buy a ticket to the pen show and buy a ticket to the workshop, but at a pen meet would just be very casual, someone would ask a question like, hey, can you show me how you mm -hmm. do this, or you know here's a piece of art i've created how can we make this more fun if, if, that, if, you're, if, you're, if you're having like coffee meet, if you're having coffee like... with candace aziza yeah. do you also count that as a pen meet yeah. or not well <laughs> usually our beats are all yeah. about pens <laughs> <laughs> unintentionally well, well i think that's that's part of it too right the official yeah. pen meets are the ones advertised and any and everyone can come which is yeah. of course like a pelican the way hub, you want it for yeah, example. which is the way you want it right but mm -hmm. also just I find like just having friends get together mm -hmm. and just have a cup of coffee or whatever and just just chat about fr like just like relaxing and joy. sharing. Yeah. And I think that helps develop the joy and keep the joy mm -hmm. alive, right? Because it's Absolutely. not it's just it's just relaxed, right? Yeah. And I really thought that I was like, oh, this is you know, I'm doing the stuff and it doesn't really matter. It's really insignificant. Like there's no point to this. And then you know, I'll get, this sounds really stupid, but then someone will message or send me an email and be like, you know what, I watched this video of yours and it helped me so much because, you know, I was just feeling really crummy or I just didn't know how to use it. And they're like, thank you so much. And you know, and then it's like, okay, maybe it isn't useless. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. for every one person who does reach out, there are surely others who are learning, appreciating, benefiting in some way. and. I'm not a professional at anything in any way, Mwah. but you no, are. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm experienced, uh, but I'm not. I'm not like <laughs> formally Look, trained. If, if there was a university for founder pens, you most likely will be a professor. That's right. <laughs> well, I think we need to start yes. that. Absolutely, and run courses yeah. or something. I'll be yeah. But you I won't be, be you, you, no. you, you won't be the teacher of drawing. That's what we saw already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will be a student. Uh but it really is the kind of like the the environment of teaching someone and learning from mm -hmm. someone. That is what makes me excited about pens. And it's not necessarily um oh, I need to buy a new pen or, oh, that new pen's coming out. I, I just want it for my collection because I'm not a collector. It is, it's more like, okay, this is a new pen. Does this appeal to me in some way? Is this something that I could use to teach people? Is this something that would be accessible for people to learn from? Which is why I love the Pile of Parallels. And yeah, it's just, it's kind of cheesy. Aziza, you're but, saying that you're not a collector, but yeah. if you have over 100 pens, so when are you then a collector? What do you mean with? I'm going to say you're a collector if you have a specific way of purchasing that, that, pens. That's Even what if you it's do, only right? five. With the parallel pens. No. Oh, no, okay. that doesn't count. Candace and I have a rule. If it's below $100, the doesn't pen doesn't count. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because... Because we have problems, and if we don't have that rule, it's embarrassing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's embarrassing. But yeah, I just like, I, I like seeing people 
relax in a workshop and just experiment with their ink and pens and discover ways to enjoy the tools without the pressure of, okay, this has to be perfect. Like formal calligraphy, this has to mm -hmm. be perfect. I do not do formal calligraphy. I'm like, let's make a mess. Let's play around. You know, yeah. And that's so, what we do. So let's play around. Bringing joy to others yeah. helps keep you motivated. It sounds yeah. cheesy, but I understand. I completely understand the... Yeah, otherwise, I'm just a weirdo motivation. doing this for I myself. <laughs> I know. So it is, it is bringing joy to others and seeing yeah. others leave a workshop or a pen meet smiling. The world is very depressing. We don't need more. The, I was awful thinking like, this is the most beautiful yeah. ending that you could ever wish for, like a podcast, but especially for yeah. like the last podcast of a year. Like, yes, it it really it, it really matters to me that I can help someone just feel mm -hmm. at ease, even if it's for an hour in a workshop. It's just like here is a way that you can use what you have and just relax enjoy explore and i give you permission to make an inky mess a lot. because sometimes people need that so yep. sometimes it's needed also i need yeah. that permission sometimes it's yep. needed i needed it sometimes too. it's needed yep. all right mm -hmm. uh aziza and kenneth we're already almost at the end of the show here you know it went so fast you know when you're having fun but aziza i need a of question course. for our next guest can you can, uh, can you come guest? up with a question for our next guest to start a show with? He doesn't. We know. don't know yet. He doesn't know. <laughs> okay, give me a second here. <laughs> give me anything. It will be, it will be in the first uh, in the first part of January of two thousand twenty four. So maybe that kind of. What color inspires you oh, most? That's a, that's a good one. That's yeah. a deep. Yeah. For myself, I'm going to say yellow. So you have an answer for me Yellow, already. why yellow? I use yellow for blending in all my workshops. Yeah. It, it, it brings warmth and lightens up all the colors and just yellow is just so good. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of yellow stuff, so it's just good. Yeah, so yellow is my color. And yours, when we're talking about colors anyway. Purple? Purple. Oh. Purple. Oh. I think because there's such a wide range of purple, I can really pick the right hue to match my mood or what I want to write. You can have the deep, dark purple with the green sheen, or you can have the nice light purple with chroma shading. Well, that's correct. Like, Indeed, purple, like purple is kind of like an, 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 a color for, for the entire year because light purple is, is you know, for, for summer and for spring, summer. it's all fine. Yep. But mm -hmm. if you have that dark purple, you know, here in the Netherlands, it's raining all yep. the time. You can ask Aziza. Dark purple yeah. perfectly fits. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So she yeah. have a dark purple with some silver shimmer for when it's sprinkled yeah. snow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good one. Good one. Good yeah, one. So. All right. Uh, ladies, thank you so yeah. much uh, for joining this last episode of the Apple Bomb Bites podcast of 2023. Uh, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, also with everybody that was watching and commenting under the videos, of course, really appreciated that. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to do that right now. And also, if you cannot have enough of Aziza and Candace talking, definitely make sure to head <laughs> over to where, where can we uh, listen to it? I know it's on Spotify, but where gourmet pens club. Okay, you can just go to the website. Yeah, So gourmet pens club.com. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you should go yeah. there and listen to them talking about pens because they go on for hours. Like, you know, yeah, we're hilarious. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Weird. You should definitely check that yeah. out. Uh, yeah. You know, after watching this, of course, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Candice, thank you so much. Uh, next week we see you again uh, with another guest, and then we're gonna, uh, you know, start off with 2024, which is going to be pretty exciting, uh, with also with some uh, interesting news. Uh, but more about that in the next episode. Aziza, thank you for uh, being the guest. Thank you, Al. and uh, you know, recapping mm -hmm. the year with us. Yes. It was my pleasure. It was a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Thank you again so much for watching. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, do that right now. And then next week, we see you uh, again in 2024. See you next year. Bye-bye.